So there was some news that said Mike Zimmer isn't in any immediate hot seat after this 1-5 and five start and during this bye. Now, should he be safe? Should he not be safe? Things like that we go over today. At least so far of what I think it is as of right now. So this is actually the first season he is this bad, if that makes sense. The other season where he didn't do very well was his first year in 2014 with this team, where they went 7-9, winning percentage. So, um, like, we already know in 2015, 11-5, 8-8, 13-3, 8-7-1, and, and then last year at 10-6. For his career, he is, well, prior to this season, he was 57-38-1 with... Uh, just under 60% at uh, 594. So average wins per year, 9.5, 6.3 losses per year. He's kind of going 9-7, and 10-6 as an average. Now, this year it's obviously dropped down to 1-5. and five. That's a 0.167%. And there is a very clear reason as to why. So the whole <laughs> injured reserve or other pup list, you know, all that kind of stuff, non-football injury lists. Minnesota has nine players on that list, eight of them on defense. Um, Daniil Hunter, uh, Michael Pierce, and Anthony Barr are the very clear ones. You also have Troy Dye, Cameron Smith, Ben Gideon, Miles Dorn, and Kenny Willekes, defensive end rookie there, seventh round draft pick. But you have kind of like your whole linebacker group here. You have four linebackers in Barr, Die, Smith, and Gideon. As of right now on the roster, you're working with Hardy Nickerson. Obviously, you do have Kendrick still. You got Todd Davis, Eric Wilson still in there. But for the most part, you're working with mostly guys that weren't there in the offseason of any form. And it was even a limited one. So it's not good. You don't even have guys that started out the season on the roster. And that's a problem. Not to mention Hunter, Barr, and Pierce are, you know, Pro Bowl level talent kind of guys. Barr making four, Hunter's one of the best edge rushers in the league, and Michael Pierce has been one of the better nose tackles since he took over in Baltimore as a full-time starter. He's always graded out as one of the best players there. So defensively, they're just not able-bodied. And for a, a very defensive head coach... That's kind of a big deal, especially when you got no linebacker depth. And even if you include Ngakwe, I kind of view if this line were healthy, Ngakwe is the third best player on the line, which is kind of ridiculous to think about. You're missing, you're still missing your two best defensive linemen and your entire linebacker depth. So they're just not prepared with actual talent on the defensive side of the ball, basically. Because your young secondary needs to learn things, and that's just how that is. We knew that coming in. The hope was the front seven would kind of make up for it. But when your front seven's depleted, it's really, really hard for that to make up for it. Offensively, there's only one right now on this list, which is Pat Elfline. And it turns out Pat Elfline is very valuable. That's, that's what we learned this year. Pat Elfline is... Someone we are not going to complain about as much, I don't think. Although, we should still try to improve from him, I think. But, I think we're just going to want to scrap the entire guard scenario here. But, I think this has proven to be an anomaly a little bit because of the injuries. And the past track record here doesn't really say this should be a continued problem. And by them saying it's not an immediate Hot seat kind of tells me at the very least he's going to finish out the season, which I think we would all agree he's at least earned that much. I would say I think he's earned the extra year to see if he can fight for it next year. I think next year's when, you know, we heavily scrutinize him because mostly because of these injuries. And that's kind of just where I stand. I think the injuries are a bigger problem than a lot of people think they are. There's a lot of, I've seen a lot of things, comments, whether it be on the Twitters, the Bleacher Reports, 
Facebooks, whatever it may be, where people kind of just forget all these guys are healthy. I even saw one, I forget where it was, claiming that uh, with this highly paid defense, this defense shouldn't be that bad. Well, when most of them are on IR, it should be that bad. They're working with a preseason front seven, and that's just not going to get it done. I think we all know that. So that's where I stand on it. I would like to know where you guys are. Opinions, comments down below. Uh, like and subscribe. Super helpful. Helps YouTube stuff. And until next time, I bid y'all adieu.